Okay, uh, can you say it one more time, please? Say what? The whole, like, um... <laughs> what's on the board? Okay, what's on the board? Yeah. You're debating the First Amendment. Uh, is terrorism a clear and present danger? Does it warrant the restrictions on your personal liabilities, such as provided by the Patriot Act? Such things as independent wiretapping without your permission. Should Congress or should the CIA or should the FBI have the right and the ability to tap your phones, do background research on you? Should they put restrictions on your freedom? Should they uh, check up on you, put monitoring devices on people? Should they have uh, lists at the airport where certain names can't fly? Things of this nature. Okay, so we'll start here with the group that is for the, uh, the First Amendment rights of restricting your freedom. So we have a chairperson over here. Who's the chairperson? All right, so I see that you were elected the chairperson today. So you guys have five minutes to make your case. Wait, who's our chair? You can have one chair group. They're neutral. Do you want to be the chairperson? What does that mean? Wait, one person in each group? Yeah, one person in each group. I'll be neutral. I'm so chair. Yeah, why do you make Eric the chair? Because he's not even in this class. He can be neutral. I get to debate myself here. Okay. Everyone else in the other groups, please listen up to what they're saying. Now remember, this is all going out on tape, so you'll be judged on what you do, what you say, and whether or not you listen. And don't pick your nose. No, don't put that on there. <laughs> oh, snap. All right. It's recording, though, right? Like, because this is recording right now. You know what I mean? Like, one of us has to be, like, neutral. The responsibilities of the chair. Anyway, can we just start? The yes, we're going to gonna start. Okay, the first five minutes goes to the far side. Any time to start is now. Are we just supposed to talk about the first one? Yeah. What you, why you believe it should happen? Why we have restrictions on our freedom? We're not for that though, because it's completely against the freedom of speech. Okay. Make your arguments, whatever. Okay. Tell everybody. Quiet. So we're debating if terrorism is a danger. <laughs> yes. We're jumping against it. Okay, you're on film. Your time has started. Thirty seconds. Yeah, it is a danger because look what happened in September. You're debating against them. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, you guys have to give your? So that happened. Um, I believe that, that people shouldn't. There shouldn't be a, a certain. Uh, there should be a restricted. A restriction for like the names that they're writing down um, that you know the names that they write down they're like these people cannot go on the airplanes I don't think I think there should be like a certain restriction for those names because I knew someone that because her last name was like long long ago somehow like related to like over in those Mideast countries that they were like <laughs> oh that is the last name that relates to that so then she like had to get, go through this whole checking line but she wasn't even related to anything like that she inherited that name so it wasn't even like herself she had no blood relation to that and I don't believe that I believe that they should revise that list because that violates freedom of freedom <laughs> okay other opinions from the side is it our turn now? Still their turn. Still another five minutes. Yeah, you guys can say something. Okay. How would you feel at night if you knew someone was listening to only private conversations on the telephone? It's not fair. I don't care. Why is it not fair? If because it saves, if it saves someone from having a bombing such as uh, the yeah, but president. they should be putting their money and their efforts towards the other country, not towards ours. I mean, like they should restrict the airports, not our telephone conversations. It should be money over there, not here. Let's try and look at Americans and things. No, 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 no. We should spend it over there on that type of stuff. And people are going to be so mad about that. They're already mad about the war. They're going to be even more mad that people are listening in on their conversation. It's a bad idea. It's like the. The, what is it called? I'm like, I'm losing words. 
it's like the they have to have a search warrant to search your house. They should have a search warrant to search. They should have probable cause before you. Yeah, to search like your phone lines, and they should shouldn't just be like, oh, I can do whatever I want. Cause then. Okay. Do you feel that way, even though that maybe listening to a conversation may catch just one terrorist in the act of planning? It's all right as long as there's probable cause. But if there's no probable cause, there's no reason that somebody should be listening to a private conversation. Okay. Uh, what would constitute probable cause for listening? If so, if you guys over please be quiet. Shh. Would just simply because you have a last name of Muhammad or something, <laughs> no. would that be probable cause? No. If you look, you have to have like a record of past discussions and like that. That'll lead to it. Okay. Anything else? You guys not making a very persuasive argument yet. You're in a neutral, so shut up. Freedom of speech. You're good. All right. <laughs> Opposing side, it's your chance. Okay. Make your case. Okay. <laughs> All right, on the government tapping your phone lines, is they're obviously doing it for a reason. They're obviously are doing it to protect you guys. Not just to like see what your private conversations are if you're doing something wrong or bad in a different area, but other than they're trying to see like, like you know how you point out some people if they have a probable cause of you know if you might look like you're bad or something to not be, but they're obviously doing it to protect you from a bad outcome of what you've had in the previous time. So that's why they probably do it. Um, on the first one, I'm just gonna. Oh, what should I say? <laughs> yeah, I think they should like protect people, like check on people that have that record, you know. Only people We're saying that, all of them. Yeah. Oh. Well, like I. That's including you. Right? They do. They need to like check up on everybody, not just individuals. Like Cammy said, how just because you have a name that sounds weird, weird or something like that, then you should be automatically put on that list and that it's more like they should do a background check on everybody because not everybody's perfect, so. Mark? Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> the wiretapping really is like a lesser evil, if you will, to protect the greater good of the whole community. <clears throat> so yes, they have to do one bad thing, but it might protect a lot of people. Five minutes. Oh. You have five minutes to open up with. And then, so, yeah, in conclusion. <laughs> okay. What else does the Terrorism Act, how does it restrict your uh, your freedoms besides just your wiretapping and your restricted fly list? Is there any other thing that it, it affects in your life that you do? Yeah, traveling. Traveling? It restricts your traveling or where you can go without having to have people sit there and stare at you and that, but like I said before, they obviously do it for a reason, and it's, you know, if it means, you know, saving like a whole bunch of other people, then it's obviously worth it, <coughs> unless you're willing to sacrifice all them people for one small reason. Okay. Does anyone know what the First Amendment actually says? What does the First Amendment actually say? What is it we're trying to restrict here? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Religion. Freedom of something. Religion and press. Okay. So how does this fit in with the, how did the Terrorism Act, what? how does the Patriotism Act restrict any of your freedom of speech? I mean, you can still say what you want to on the phone. <laughs> You can still say, well, oh, honey, I love like, you, you know, and nobody's going to care. Even though it's like, this is, even though I'm on the wrong side, it's like, because of, because they let them have their freedom of speech is the reason a lot of us got restricted for what we could, like, normally go and do. You know, so. All right. Because we gave them that freedom of speech, that's kind of what we give. So. All right, let's take a look at our justice system right now as far as this freedom of speech and stuff. You have, a, you have someone who commits a very heinous crime, very bad crime. 
they admit it. They admit to the police that they do it. But uh, uh, the police can't use it because they didn't realm their rights. Fair or unfair? It's fair to the point because it's like, you know, there, but then again, it's not fair because there's no point. It's just teaches everybody else to just kind of do it, and then it's like they can get away with it because they know that they have that one thing protecting them from getting in trouble for it. Okay. Well, how is that different than having someone you suspect is a terrorist in the United States, which is a threat to everyone, but yet we're not allowed to monitor uh, listen to their phone calls. Well, I think that they should, if they have like a probable cause, like Aunt and Cammy said, unless they have a probable <coughs> cause of of having any kind of suspicion with you, then they should be able to, because you know, you obviously gave them that reason to suspect you for that reason. You know, if they didn't, if they thought, if they didn't think you were like suspicious of doing some kind of bad act, then they wouldn't have be trying to tap your phone lines and know what you're doing. This uh, act that we have right now, you think it's going to influence other restrictions on your freedoms? You guys know what's going on in Texas right now? What's going on in Texas? What's going on in Texas? Texas is making it mandatory for all females age 12 and over to get a shot that will prevent a certain type of cancer, but they're making it mandatory that if you go to school, you've got to take that shot. Is that kind of like this? Well, it kind of goes with like any other kind of shot, you know, you have to have a sh okay. certain kind of shots to prevent having some kind of other bad thing go happen. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have But a then shot? again, you know, it's kind of, yeah, it just kind of goes against what you believe. Because if you, don't, if you believe that that's not right, then they can't make you do it. Okay. What kind of cancer is it again? But it's a cancer, so cancer. I mean, wouldn't you want to take it because it's cancer? Why would you not want that? Okay, because it also. Why would you uh, not want that shot? Uh, no, I want to get cancer. Exactly. It's my right. The one thing that they have on this uh, shot is um, it also prevents some types of sexually transmitted diseases, and they made it mandatory for all females 12 and above to take that shot before they go to school. Twelve. So, Why should the yeah. female get it? A lot of parents. Have services and don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fair. You can't tell us that we have to get this shot. Do they have to pay for it? No. Then why not? I don't understand why it's like. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a prevention of a threat that may or may not be there, right? Kind of like it's the same thing. If it's not such a big deal, then why do people make a big deal out of dress code? It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, can, you, like can, you can kind of relate that. I'm sorry. Is there any harms from the shot? Like, well, we not this time. <laughs> and then everyone's going to be like, out of the long time. Maybe five, ten years down the there might be. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are we going to say the shot may do 10 or 15 years from now? Putting that virus in your system to counteract cervical cancer and sexually transmitted diseases, what else can it do to you down the road 10 or 12 years? Maybe that's think it's been tested. Maybe it caused some problems. Back. Uh, everything has the downfall to it. Everything could be great, but there's always a fall on everything. Mm -hmm. The government has not always been known for uh, protecting people totally. If there was a uh, Tuskegee type incident that happened a few years ago, back in the 1950s, where they injected military people with the syphilis virus just to see if they could cure it. And in some cases, they couldn't. A clear violation of their, their civil rights and their First Amendment rights. Yeah. But uh, that's coming up now. But a lot, of these, a lot of these drugs that you use now have effects on you late out. That's, that's basically impossible for them to do that. So there's just no way. They could have enough people to actually wiretap everyone's phones. Well, like I said, unless you give them a reason to suspect you, then it wouldn't be such a big deal. And they're probably not doing it without reason. Yeah, I don't think they're just going out and saying, "Okay, I, today I'm going to tap <laughs> the roll his phone." I think. Uh, Good luck with that. I'm never on it. <laughs> well, well, you said something like it's like a. It's a lesser evil. A lesser evil, and yeah. then like it's a little thing that will protect the greater. Protect. Good. 
protect their credit good, like you said. But, so what if they do tap our phones? What if they do find something out? Then it might lead to something else that might restrict us. You never know that they, all of a sudden, they might be like, okay, well, we now need to restrict this because people are more talking about this, and it just might put more restrictions on us. And you never know what could happen, like what the next thing could lead to, like, oh, now we need to restrict this. Oh, now this. Now everyone has to wear the same clothes. Like, you know, you know, like, just, <coughs> I don't know, it's just, Well, they can't restrict us too much on certain things because then they're restricting themselves as well. <coughs> it seems like they're putting too much energy into the stupid stuff. I just think it should be more <coughs> airport security and things like that because, you know, that's, like, the important stuff. I think the internet, they should monitor it. I'm totally cool with the internet thing because... You're putting it out there, you know, but I think that they're putting all this time and money and effort into phone <coughs> conversations. It just seems like the airport security and things like that would be way more important. So. Well, what Katie was saying that it might turn out to be eventually or spin out of control to be America becoming a totalitarian state. But the way our government is set up is that the people can rebel against that so that it can't happen. So if they do try to take away too many of our rights, people can rebel. It's whether or not the people are like willing to stand up for them. That's true. But it's just like, also you have to take into consideration, like you never know what can happen. Well, there's always like, like I said, there's always like a bad thing to a good thing. It's just, yeah. What if they said no one under the age of uh, 21 could operate or own a cell phone? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you've lived without it for how long? You can live without it for another couple of years. Brenda, you couldn't live without your cell phone for 30 seconds. Yes, I could. No, you could. You took it away from I bet you couldn't go one, one day. Take it away from her and find out. Yeah, take it away from her and find out. I did one day, she went crazy trying to find it. <laughs> well, Kevin took it. Let's do it. Okay. Anything else you, you want to add in here? Okay. We just need to be careful. Just make sure that they follow the First Amendment instead. But also, like, protect the greater good of our country. I guess the basic question here is, does the government have the right to restrict your freedoms if you live in this country? Yes, because they gave it to us. To an extent, they do. But then again, it's like if they mm -hmm. restrict us too, bad, too much, then you get small groups of people that are just going to cause they more damage than they can't already put it on, you know? Because they're being rebe they're rebelling against that. So you don't want to piss off too many people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's expressing the theory of Machiavellianism. The end justifies the means. They might wiretap a few people's phones, but if it saves thousands of people, then I don't see why it's so bad. Well, it's alright as long as it saves people, but they have to have probable cause save. Like the phone list, say it's calling over Al Qaeda a bunch of times. I give that gives a really good probable cause for that. But yeah. if it's just phone calls between neighborhood and stuff. Yeah. Don't they already phone tap people's phones already? Like yeah. So yeah. what? I'm confused. Like yeah. what are they saying they're gonna do? Like are they gonna phone tap like everyone? Or? Well, it's well, phone tapping, but on a broader scale, yeah. there'll be a lot more people that are phone tapping. And I'm just making phone calls to like Iraq or what? Why? Why would you care if you're being phone tapped? Well, I wouldn't care at all. If you've got nothing to hide, then you shouldn't worry about it. Exactly. You're not helping. <laughs> That's a good point. Right there. Well, I don't know what's going on. I'm just stuff, talking. Like, people, I can see people that are in America and they want to have the freedoms that we have, but because they came from that country, they can't because they have family over there. That's not cool. Like, if, if I came over here, I was from Iraq, and well, people are listening to my conversations and stuff. And I'm who like, cares, though? You're not talking about bombing countries. I can see how that would make people mad, though. Hold on, so if you, if you call somebody like in Iraq and said, yo, are you in a bomb this place, they would actually come all the way down to your house and arrest you, too? Probably so. <laughs> 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 so I think that's probably one of the key things that they're keying in on is where are you making the calls to or where are you receiving the calls from? If you're making it to a country that's known for terrorism, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, um, <clears throat> sure, I think they're going to tap in on those lines. Well, like, it's understandable why people are, like, getting mad because it's like it hasn't happened like, to them before. So it's like you feel like they're just going against all your rights and everything. But then again, it's like if you've got nothing to hide, 
then you shouldn't worry about it. Okay, go ahead and shut your camera off. On this side, about like the, that you do need a search warrant or something for the phone tapping. So that's a very good point. And like only probable causes. Do that because that's what our law is about. Like they can't just go in and search your house for drugs. They have to have a search warrant. They have to have a probable cause to do that. And sometimes the government takes a little bit too far. But on this side, they did give a very good thing that they do tap, like sometimes they tap your phones for your own protection. They could do that, like the lesser evil, the greater good. It's a good one. And uh, um, like what Brenda said, like the cancer shot, it's there to like save a lot of people, but yet it can't have a downfall. There's actually one record of when they came up. They were testing a bunch of African American men for herpes or whatever, and they, um, scientists still wanted to study on them. So when they came up with the cure, they didn't tell them, and they still studied them, and then they died. And that is that's when the government takes it too far. Dang. That's where you messed up. All right. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments on it? Well, like Angie said, you, the government doesn't always tell you the downfall of everything, <laughs> or tells you anything at all at that it's you know it's like pretty much like as if the Americans are kind of like their play toys they kind of just use them as they want and then it's like if they fall apart break whatever it's kind of oh well we've got more to spare okay, oh, okay you can go ahead and share it up and save it for the, the second, the second amendment was individual gun control ownership the founders intent and is gun control necessary under current unforeseen <coughs> circumstances by our founders. Okay, I have a I have a real burning. <laughs> so this side wants to open. Maybe go run again. Okay. Well, as a very active member and a sponsor of the NRA. <laughs> what? National, National Rifle Association. National Rifle Association. We fight for the Second Amendment because they're actually trying to get rid of it. <laughs> and um, so, anyway, I believe that it is like that basic people should have guns, like average Joe's like us, you know? But if you have a criminal record, I believe that they should be taken away. Because, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> On the first question. Point and true that if you have a criminal record, you're not allowed to own firearms. You can't you can't own a firearm if you if you have any type of a criminal record. Yeah. Yeah. But on the first question, um, I don't think it was their intent for individual gun ownership because it says each state has the right to maintain a militia, a volunteered armed force for its own protection, which really doesn't base on the average people, but I believe that we do need it because in some, like, some people, you know, like, hunting, they like to go hunting, you can't go out and, like, strangle the deer, I mean, you need to shoot it. <laughs> you can't jump on it Yeah, because then you get killed. But, um, <laughs> I don't know a person that has a road buck, but that was kind of interesting story. Anyway. <laughs> I guess if you're bad enough, you can strike. But um, and also like we need it for our own, our own personal protection. If somebody enters our house, what are you gonna do? Throw sports at them? <laughs> well, yeah, but there is another point to that. I almost got shot the other day by my own father. <laughs> I walked into the house and he thought I was a burglar, and he pulled a gun on me in his underwear. It was kind of freaky. But I believe that they should do tests to see if you are mentally sane enough to carry a gun. <laughs> well, but I do believe that guns are a good thing to have for our own personal protection and for shooting, target shooting. Okay. Should there be a limit on the number of guns you own? Hey, so what about uh, so I think that um Okay, call on both sides please. I think people can find a reason to say that people shouldn't have guns, like it's for your protection, but if the burglars didn't have guns then you know 
they won't be able to kill you or whatever, but like murderers can come up with very creative ideas that they don't need guns to just kill you. So if they do have guns, then we should be able to have guns to protect ourselves. <laughs> and it doesn't matter like how many guns you have, if you have like one gun, it's going to do just so much damage. You can't like shoot five guns at the same time, so who cares if you have a gun right now? I guess, but, um, that's why. You guys? <laughs> so, Okay. <clears throat> Rebuttal against them? Why should we? Well, is it their turn now? Yeah. yeah, first of all, like I would like to say hi to my mom and dad, but... <laughs> what about people that have uh, their guns in the trucks and stuff, like people that, you know, that just drive with a gun under the seat and stuff like that? How about that? Make yeah, it makes it more uh, like accessible to like crimes and stuff. Like, yeah. especially people that have road like road rage and stuff. Like, the kind of doesn't seem like. What? So probably just you know you crash into them and they pull up and all like, what are you doing? So pull out a gun and stuff. And, you know, like, there are regulations for that though. Yeah. Like when you're traveling across the border, you have to have them separate. Like you either have the gun in the trunk and the clip in the glove box, or vice versa. Need them. <laughs> you need them separate. So, like, I don't know, my friend gets pulled over all the time because he has his 22 in the gun rack in the back of his truck. But he can do that, and he has the ownership over it, and he has a gun carrying permit, but he has to keep the magazines in his glove compartment. It cannot be loaded to drive. So. Yeah. yeah, but how easy would it be to grab a clip, load your gun, and like, shoot hey, somebody? You, but also, what if somebody oh, holds... Oh, sorry, I'm neutral. But they're fighting this time. Well, what if somebody holds up your... I mean, what if you all of a sudden get, like, a gang just come up to your truck and, I mean, can't just... Especially if you're in base. Yeah, if you're, like, some puny person and have no way of fighting them, and they come up and surround your car, you're screwed. And so that gun might be... You're in a car. Drive away. <laughs> How old are you gonna be without a gun? Yeah, really? If you have a gun in your car, they shoot your <laughs> how old are you? How old are you gonna be? Have a gun too. <laughs> how old are you gonna be to have a gun? Oh yeah, I had a gun when I was two, but. <laughs> That's what we should. We're debating sharing stories. I got guns. It's a twenty-two. It's a big deal. These guys have something to say to her. Talk to us. Uh, but like, if people know that your magazine is supposed to be in your glove box, can they just grab your gun and your magazine and just like kill people? You know, like they break in your car and stuff. You know, like having your magazine in the glove box and your gun like right here isn't really going to change anything. Yeah, but they can do anything. They can like That's grab the wheel <laughs> that you're driving with and throw it at you and like knock you unconscious. They could do anything. Wait, your, your gun? <laughs> what? No, like they could come up with any creative idea. Well, yeah, but well, why are you about with your doors open and your People can kill you with like a DNA? pencil. I mean, why would they be trying to kill you though? No one's just gonna come up to your car like on a random street and try to kill you. Hey, if you're in jail, people like chicken bones. <laughs> 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 I have toothbrushes. Yeah. <laughs> it's still it's a creepy world, and we do need guns to protect ourselves. Yeah, but then again, the psychos have guns too. And what if aliens invade us? Huh? They have special powers. Yeah, we need our guns to fight. Like, <laughs> you need a baseball bat. Yeah. So then you have a gun too. You can see the way. There was a story of like seeing. That doesn't matter. You still had the well, yeah, opportunity. Yeah, but if they break in your house and steal your guns, then you're pretty much screwed. There was this little boy that was eight years old in days. He was in elementary school, and I guess his teacher gave him like, uh, like math homework, and it was like multiplication homework and stuff. So like he pulled a gun out and he said, here you take your home back, I'm only gonna do it. So like the teacher was terrified and he didn't want to father because he was scared of the little eight year old because 
really thought that he was going to you know, pull the trigger. Well, parents should lock their guns up, but I still think they should be able to have them. Well, if people weren't allowed to have guns, none of that stuff would have happened. Yeah, but psycho people can still get an axe and throw it at you. And you, There's if you no had a gun to protect yourself, you could shoot him before you get an axe. Them. There's no way you can get rid of guns. No matter what, somebody is going to do that. My mom even said that if the Second Amendment gets taken off, and we cannot bear okay, arms. Say, She's going to take our safe and hide it. And we have a Bulgarian AK-47 that's not registered. <laughs> I mean, she's like, people, they're always going to have guns. <laughs> no, actually, I think it is. I don't know if it's registered or not. I'm just saying. <laughs> These days, you don't FBI. see I didn't have that. survive. Like, back in the day when, like, the founding fathers were back there, they needed their guns to hunt for food and stuff. We don't even need them. We have a freaking grocery store. Yeah. Let them, like, the, let, like the businesses that need to shoot stuff, like cows and stuff, let them have guns with the common people. Yeah, I can't don't even need guns. But if someone's out playing horseshoes, you know, like they can use those horseshoes to kill someone. If someone wants to go out and, like, shoot, yeah, but who's gonna yeah, no one uses a horseshoe I mean, to kill someone. Everyone else. Is I mean, no. <laughs> and like, who's gonna carry a gun when they're playing horseshoes? I mean, what is that? Please don't yeah. play your darts. What if you have? But I don't know. You could be doing anything, and it's something for recreation, like it's for someone to go out, and shoot, and then eat what they eat. killed. Well, that doesn't really happen that often. I don't know if Why does it? Doesn't, like lives out there and just kills. Him. Well, don't you go hunting? Oh yes, yeah. every day. Yeah, you, don't need, you don't even need. You don't hunting need the food. Like, hunting, but hunting's, but like hunting's like a hobby. You don't need to do it to get the food. Yeah. Like but, you don't need deer meat. There's a like, fucking grocery store. Like you don't need to watch TV because it doesn't make you feel good. I know the TV. The TV doesn't kill anyone. The guns do. People use guns more than anything to kill people than freaking like axes or stuff. When was the last time you heard someone getting killed by an axe? Yeah, that doesn't happen. Yeah, all guns, the time on the street you hear about <laughs> gunshots and stuff. Guns don't pe kill people. Angry husbands do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to be an angry husband. Who have these crops, especially here in Utah, we have rabbits and other pests that get into our you're crops. A bow and arrow. And so, <laughs> it's hard to shoot a rabbit with a bow and arrow. It's hard enough with the 22 to shoot a moving rabbit. Why don't you just like don't shoot, shoot a bow and arrow? Yeah, Brenda and I have shoot them. We kill them by stepping on them. <laughs> if we say to take away guns, then we can <laughs> you can take away anything. Like, but you can limit guns, like, to farmers and, you know, what enforcement if the offices. And and walk into someone's room while they're sleeping. But anybody can go crazy. crazy. If you take guns away, somebody's going to find a way to get the gun. So you can never really get rid of guns, whether you want to take yeah, them away. Yeah, they'll find a way to get them, but if the government, like, crack down on it, there's no way that they can smuggle it in. Well, they can still do it, like, drugs and stuff, but guns are... Look at that. Guns are... Think about all the stores that would be closing down because not selling guns and how many places that. Yeah, but think of how many lives would be saved because there wasn't any guns. Look at that. Seriously. Those right now, today, guns do kill. They find everybody's locker, everybody's vehicle that they've been fighting any firearms on this campus. Yeah. Well, half the farmers that go to the school, like all the cowboys and stuff, they carry guns in the back of their thing to school. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that they do because most of my friends have. Okay. What about, what about uh, let's say, a young female or, or anybody traveling across country and your car breaks down? Oh, you got it. You need a weapon for protection? Yes. No. You not a weapon. Right you don't even need a gun. Yeah, like, like, some girls aren't strong enough to hit a guy with a baseball bat. And do that. Grab the mace. Yeah, get the mace. Like, you know, you're going to protect yourself than a gun. Yeah. yeah. You know, what are you going to like, shoot? But let's say a gang of six guys come up. You're not going to mace all six of them. Let's say a gang of six guys come up. You're not going to mace all six of them. Let's say the gun, it'll work a lot faster. That's why you say one at a time. Yeah, but and you don't even need to shoot. <laughs> 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 Next. One at a time. No, one at a time. All right, hold on. I have to tie my shoes. <laughs> All right, go. <laughs> okay. When summarize what you've done, see where you're at on this debate here. Who's right, who's wrong, who's won. Right. That's yes. all <laughs> right. Your final statement. Go. There is no way to get rid of guns. It's not going to happen. Even if they do pass a law, there is going to be millions of people out there with guns hidden somewhere in the boons and the tree houses, and <laughs> rocks underground. They're, I mean, they'll make secret rooms in their houses. There are going to be guns, no matter what, because you cannot take that away from the daily people. Like people have grown up with guns. There's no way that they're just going to. Here you go. It's not going to happen.
Um, <laughs> people need guns to protect themselves, and like with Andrew said, that there's going to be people with guns out there, and we need to protect ourselves with guns too. So. Um, it's true. Like, if basically you need guns. If you want guns, you can have guns. If you don't want guns, you don't have guns. But people have guns, you know, for protection, they say. But, you know, I think most of the time people have guns for recreation. If you want guns for recreation and fun, who cares as long as you're not shooting somebody, you know? That's and, a by the way, I guess it's your, it's your right to have guns. You don't have to have guns if you don't want them. So, shut up. But people who like, you know, people are like, I need to take your guns away because someone's, you know, it's true. People, guns don't kill people. People kill people. People always find a way to kill somebody. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not my gun that kills somebody. You're not going to stop people from killing people by taking their guns. So. <laughs> if it weren't for stupid people killing people, then there would, then they, like, there wouldn't be a problem. Like, yeah, like you the could, government trying to take away the guns and stuff. You can, like, cut down people by guns. What's your final statement? Um, make guns illegal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> next. Pretty uh, much the same as him. Just like guns are pretty stupid. Even though I'm, I'm not. This is I'm doing this for the class. Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say like guns don't kill people, but people kill people. People kill people with guns. <laughs> so, <laughs> they have guns. It's like the two legs of the eggs versus chicken or the egg. Yeah, I mean, people would still die and stuff, but like without guns, it'd make it that much more. Because you can't like throw an axe at someone from like 50 feet away or whatever. You gotta pop a cap in them. <laughs> See, like drive by, drive by shootings, you can't kill people by like throwing stuff at them because that like the range doesn't work that far. So it'd like lower the killing people. If, Take that guy to uh, Uzi. Yeah, they got rid of guns. That's my final I'm not a fan for guns, but I think if you're going to have them, you need to, like, like have a safe, you know? Have it away from, like, young kids and places where, yeah, it's easy for you to access it in case of an emergency, you know, but a way where your kids are going to be safe. Somewhere where, you know, your kid's not going to be playing with it and pull the trigger and accidentally it's loaded. You know, that's how accidents happen. That's how when, you know, little kids go, well, I'm mad at you. My dad taught me how to shoot a gun. Well, oh, shooting people is not always going to solve the problem. Have guns, have them for fun, but you need to have them, you know, in an enclosed area where it's not going to harm others in sake of an accident. Good job. Cut it. Cut. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is the what third is, discussion yes. of equal rights. What is the equal rights amendment? <laughs> 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 it's the same rights and it's not like one person does. Like, it's okay. better benefits than another person does. Okay. Everyone gets the same treatment. Such as? Do, do females get discriminated against? In some ways, yes. Do certain ethnic groups get discriminated against? No. Is this protected by the equal rights amendment? Yes, but it's but it's different because some people have different views of things. Like we can't um, discriminate against a group, but like some people don't believe like like um, I don't know. Like some groups, we can't tell people what to believe in and what not to believe in. Like if they don't like a person, we can't tell them not to. You know, so it's hard to make everybody like every citizen believe the equal rights are the same. Is there times where a person's rights should be restricted? Yeah. I mean, is there a time when, let's say, males versus females. Should females have the same rights as a male? Yes. 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 All the time? All the time. Not in most cases. All the time? Um, there's some situations that it shouldn't be, but then it just <laughs> depends on who you are and what you know, what you would do in the situation with it. Well, that would, that would be like... Um, Female, yeah, they say some situations females can't do what males do. Well, what if females could do something that males could do, couldn't do? Would the ma would males get angry? Yeah. So it's the exact same thing. 
I know you really want to have babies, but you just can't. You guys, you guys believe a female can do anything you can't do? Come on now. Okay, they, they kept quite a few guys. Now, what about, uh, let's just take military service. Should females be required to do exactly the same thing that males are doing in female? Should females be placed in a combat position? If they want to, if they want to, if they agree to it, they should be able okay. to do it. Yeah, yeah but you fine. can't say, you can't say if they agree to it, if you're going to give everyone equal rights, if you're going to say a male has to go in the military, go to combat, then are you going to say that a female has to go in the military and go to combat? No. Yeah, why not? Okay. If if we all if they if they fight for women's rights and they say that women can do all this stuff inside the country, why can't women go to war with the men? They can do it just as well. There's nothing that says they can't just because. Okay. My opinion is they shouldn't get a female's driver's license. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bolivia. Bolivia is a perfect example. They will not allow females to drive in Bolivia. I think that's a good law. It's a great one. Think, think about it. Think about all the traffic you would cut down on the streets, and all the crazy drivers were all females. We know that. What? So whatever. Yeah, right here. Uh, you're lucky your wife is here. All right. What do you guys think about this? Should they have every right you've got? Why not? That goes against like. This goes with the makeup. You're supposed to film it. I'm talking to. Okay. So you guys are saying females should have every single right that males have. Um, not, not not necessarily. Like if if they feel that they can, like some women feel that they can be in the military and fulfill everything that guys can then they should do it, yeah, but then there's yeah. some situations where girls, like, you know, can't do everything, you know, like, they're very strict on, like, um, how many, like, push-ups and exercise and stuff like that, and a woman can't really, you know, do all that that a man can do, but it just depends on if they feel like they can, they should. Okay, okay you guys got about five minutes to shoot them down here. What are you going to say? You know, it's hard to debate when you're actually for it and not against it. <laughs> Just want to put that out there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is Anybody else in here have a burning opinion they want to put in? What was your burning opinion? Here's one over here. He has, he has, go ahead, Brenda. Females should have, like, a right to an extent as the same as male because it's like there's so much controversy of what men and women do because like a guy can go into interior designing and nobody cares but if a woman goes to become something it's most likely known to man it's like everybody's shocked well apparently if they're fit to do it then they should have the right to be able to do it they shouldn't be like oh just because you're female you can't endure it well boys get discriminated against too like if they go into that you obviously think they're gay or something like if they're an interior designer or like a hair cutter obviously they're going to be a little bit <laughs> <laughs> jump in there, wherever you want to, jump in. Um, like, um, I see some women in construction and stuff, like, they, they do, like, uh, roofs and stuff, and, like, people in construction, like, all the guys have, like, uh, like, a whole bunch of respect for them because they're actually out there doing, like, the job. There are none. They, they know really what, are They know what it takes There's to, like... No females in construction. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. You gotta go out a lot. Yeah, there is. Because my dad works in construction, there's no females. Oh, well, that's, that's just one company. Yeah. That's not including. He's worked for like five companies. No one is inside. Well, what does he do? Like um, framing, concrete, no, like, roofing. Um, like a that's why. That's why. You gotta be What's in over here. You have, you've been trying to get in here for some time. You gotta be like the girl to keep up. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If they're qualified. Yeah. Or if a guy can keep up, why not? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Is there some, some job, for example, that a male should not be allowed to do? Teaching. <laughs> 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 Whatever, keeping this. Just kidding. 
Yeah, where's our guys? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Bull riding. Women, I've tried. I cannot enter in a rodeo for bull riding. They no, will not let me down. There's no, like, it's, it's, it's like, if a girl can do that, let her do it, you know? And, like, they let guys barrel race. Barrel racing is a girl's sport, but girls can't go bull riding? I mean, come on. On the other hand, I think that, like, if you want to, you can. Like, if girls on the start of a football game, it's, it's like, it doesn't... I don't know, why not let boys do their sports and like have girls, like older people can do this, but little kids can't do that, like because it's just not their thing. They've got females, like in wrestling and in like football. Do they? They do. Yeah. There's, there's one in the state of Utah, but I heard she's like a butch. I mean, she wasn't this year, it was a few years back. But, no, no, because she's she just she she have, like, <laughs> she's a female. She's a female? And then they've had them in wrestling before, like, back east and then in, like, California. And that is just, but a lot of the coaches will find, like, any kind of excuse to keep a girl out. Okay. Yeah. Guys, what do you think, Bell? How would you like to play football with uh, Angie out there? Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. Freaking. Well, I'm not sexist or anything, but, like, when you're playing <laughs> <laughs> like, when you're playing football with a girl, like, I hate, like, accidentally hurting a girl. Nothing makes me feel more, like, embarrassed. Or, yeah, nobody wants to. Yeah, it makes us feel better. No, if they're on the football field and you hit them way hard and you hurt them, it makes you feel way bad. <laughs> what does she turn yes, sir, go ahead. Hammer drive. Hey, it's, it's called equality of opportunity. Oh, no, I'm totally yeah. down with that. No, that's <laughs> yeah. Thank you for this session in our government class. We conclude this with myself saying goodbye. You're all, Colonel. Bye-bye. <laughs>